Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like, and share the program so that your friends can join in the conversation. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And in both cases, make sure you hit the notification button. That way you can get the notifications when we go live and you can participate in the live chat while the program is going on. Also, please visit fpcgear.com. It is the place to go to get all of your Pro 2A swag. We're talking t-shirts, coffee mugs, hoodies, uh, you name it, we've got it there. And we're always uploading new designs. And the best part is every dollar that you spend goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All right, so we all know that one of the number one things that uh, the anti-gun community is pushing is this idea of universal background checks, right? This belief that, well, if when someone obtains a firearm, if we make them go through this background check system, well, then we'll make sure that criminals or bad guys or those who are seeking to commit suicide or mass murder uh, will never get their hands on a firearm or will, will, for the most part, not be able to get their hands on a firearm. Well, first of all, we know that that is not true. But the interesting thing about this is, is, is that, once again, this is an idea that is, is, is pretty darn popular. At least if you listen to what the pollsters say, uh, upwards of 70% of people want to uh, believe in background checks. Now, I've always said there's a, there's a fundamental problem with when pollsters ask questions like this because nine times out of ten, the devil is in the details of the question. When you call it background check, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the system where you basically want to create a registry where people have to go and register what firearms they own so that when the government does finally confiscate them, uh, they'll know exactly where to go? I think when you start getting into the details of what it looks like, of what what a uh, uh, background check looks like, you know, you st I, th I think a lot of that support starts to whittle away. That's m my personal opinion. But the other thing is this, and this is, unfortunately, there are a number of people out there who think that, well, we need to have the government do it because, well, that's what the government does. And the problem is, is that we're finding more and more often that the government is not very good at what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, in fact, they're not very good at many things at all. When we start talking about efficiency, when we start talking about how things are run, well, government tends to screw it up a lot. And guess what? One thing that's part of this conversation that they've screwed up is, that's right, background checks. So there was data that recently came out. And what this data showed was just how inefficient, uh, just how inefficient the government was in terms of handling some of these things. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at what, what that data showed uh, about how the government is handling background checks. Now, uh, the National Instant Criminal Background Check System is the system that they use. It's run by the FBI. All right? So according to data that was recently released, from the beginning of 2014 through September 30th, so that's uh, 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 just recently, of 2019, the FBI purged 1,115,000 1,630 unresolved NICS transactions. Now, you're saying, what does that mean, unresolved NICS transactions? What that means is these are people who applied, uh, who, who went in to purchase a firearm, uh, had their information submitted for the background check, and it was never completed. In other words, it never went through. They were never able to, uh, well they were never able to buy the firearm because Nix somehow wasn't able to get it through. So keep in mind, over a five-year period, we're talking over a million people, over a million people, over a five-year period, basically were denied their fundamental right to keep and bear arms. So let's compare, let's compare, these, let's compare these numbers. What do these numbers look like compared to some other numbers? So out of an average of 8.2 million background checks per year, that's about how many background checks there are per year, these purges constitute an average of 2.3% of all applications. 2.3%, right, of all applications were, in fact, 
uh, well, I'm assuming that since they were unresolved, that uh, I'm going to assume that since they were unresolved, that that being unresolved also meant that they didn't get their firearm. I'm gonna I'm going to assume that. So that's how many people didn't get there. That's how many people didn't out of all out of all those people. Once again, 1.1 million people. But but check this out. So then when you also compare it to here we go. 1.2% of applications are denied, right? So in other words, twice as many people were were or twice as many applications were uh non-resolved or basically were just sitting out there weren't resolved at all and then another 1.2 applications were in fact denied and we know that a, a significant percentage of those that are denied are in fact uh, erroneously denied 10.7 background checks are delayed 10.7 percent background checks are delayed uh longer than 72 hours right how crazy is that so we're talking about now 10 percent. so now we're talking about when you add it all together, all right. So let's let's if we were to add all of these together, we're talking about what three percent, five, seven, blah, 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 about fifteen percent, about fifteen percent of all background checks. Every time someone goes to get a background check, they are having their rights delayed or denied. About fifteen percent of the time. I find that to be, I mean, think about this. Think about if 15% of the time someone went to vote, they were denied their right to vote. Or if 15% of the time someone was denied their right to go to church. Or 15% of the time their property, they were searched unreasonably. Or were forced, I mean, think of all of our constitutional rights, all of our civil rights, right? Think about all of those. Imagine if 15% of the time, one-eighth of the time, your right was either going to be delayed or denied. And keep in mind, see, this is the thing. These are the people who are claiming that, well, we have to have background checks. We have to have background checks because these things are so essential. But but wait a minute. Um, so if they're so essential, then less than 1% of all, of all firearms that are, are, are found to be crime guns were actually obtained. I mean, we're, we're, oh, less than 1% of guns used in a crime were obtained at a gun show, less than 1%. 96% of all firearms that are used in crimes, or at least that they find that are used in crime, crimes, uh, were not in the possession of the person who originally purchased it, meaning they were stolen or trafficked firearms, meaning they weren't purchased by the original person. The person who actually got the background check, yeah, that's not the person who's using the, the gun for a crime. And then they say, well, but, but, but the mass shootings, this will stop mass shootings. Do you know that just about every single person who's conducted a mass shooting actually passed a background check? Just about every single one passed a universal background check. So in other words, you, you want to, this is the thing. So in order to not stop mass shootings, because background checks have not stopped mass shootings, we have them in California, we still had Gilroy, we still had Tehama County. We still had borderline shooting. We, I mean, we still had Poway. I mean, we, we still had multiple. San Bernardino, we've had multiple mass shootings, even though we have background checks right here in the state of California. But it didn't stop it. So it doesn't. we know it doesn't stop mass shootings. Um, it clearly doesn't stop guns from being used in crimes because... Well, these guns are not the ones being used in crimes, at least not by the person who actually went through the background check. The people going through the background checks are not the ones who are actually committing the crimes. So in order to not stop crime, in order to not stop mass shootings, you want to inconvenience, not just inconvenience, you want to deny the rights of, of, of over 1.1 million people. Those are just the ones who just, well, yeah, we don't know it never went through that doesn't include the millions more who were denied inappropriately that doesn't include the others who had their rights delayed inappropriately and now what they want to do is is that they want to expand those numbers because well they're the government and 
well, if they're government, they must be good. Or at least, if they're anti-gun, they must be good. Folks, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not one who's a big believer in government efficiency. Uh, I believe that our founding fathers made the government inefficient intentionally because we're not supposed to trust government. We're, we're not. I'm sorry, we're just not. We're all... Let me clarify. I don't know if it's not not necessarily trust, but we're supposed to always be wary of government, in particular, a government that consistently wants to grow in scope, in size and in power and in authority. And that's the reason why the Second Amendment exists, to make sure that we don't allow such a tyrannical government to be put in place. And the idea of creating which in essence would be a national registry because that's the that's what they use background checks for. That's how they try to set this thing up is so that they can know exactly who bought what guns, when they bought them, and where they're at. So that when the time comes that they can finally convince 50% plus one of people that we need to ban all guns, that way they know exactly where to go to get them. Yeah, I'm not down with that, and I know you're not either. Anyway, folks, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for liking and sharing these videos and telling your friends about the Farms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.